Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Data Minute podcast. My name is Peter Walker. I am the head of insights here at Carta. And welcome to our very first Data Minute Q&A. These shorter episodes are going to be interspliced in between the interviews to give you a sense of the questions we're getting from the audience and what our startup data has to say about them. For this first Q&A, we're going to be focused on five questions that come directly from our State of Startup Compensation report. So this report, if you're not familiar with it, is a deep dive into everything across hiring, layoffs, and compensation trends for the 43,000 startups that use Carta. It also contains a lot of special information driven by the thousands of startups that use Carta Total Compensation, which is our product that helps founders understand what the market is for comp, for salary, and equity across hundreds of roles in private tech, and indeed hundreds of cities across the U.S. and the globe. It's a wonderful product, and if you're a founder, I suggest you check it out. All right, that's a recap of the report. Let's jump into the five key questions that we're going to answer today. Question number one, are startups still hiring? Well, as you can see from the chart that we're showing on the screen, the answer is not nearly as much as they used to be. So for those of you who are listening along and can't see this chart, we have a bar chart showing the number of new employees that joined Carta Startups year over year. In 2022, more than half a million people joined Carta Startups as new hires. In 2023, that number was cut nearly in half to 267,000 new hires. So startup hiring in 2023 was a lot slower than it was in 2021 or 2022. Now, the other thing to note on this chart is that you can see that there's a number of people who left those jobs as well, either through layoff or through voluntary departures. And last year, more people left their job at startups than joined new startups. The actual number of people working across Carta Startups shrunk for the first time in basically our entire history as a company going back to 2013. So this was a very difficult startup hiring market. Question number two, who got hit worst in startup layoffs? Now, to be clear, layoffs were not solely a private tech sort of phenomenon. They were happening at Google. They were happening at Facebook or Meta. They were happening across all of big tech as well. But 2023 was a pretty rough year for layoffs in private startups, to be sure. Now, who got hit worse than these layoffs? Who was most likely to be laid off in this period of change? It turns out that the common truism of last in, first out was unfortunately real over the past year. The lower the tenure of the employee, the more likely they were to be impacted by one of these layoffs. If you look at this chart, and for those of you who can't see it on the screen, it's again a stacked bar chart showing the difference or the number of people, excuse me, who made it to their first year work anniversary. So for the people hired in 2021, about 16% of them were gone before their one-year work anniversary. For the people hired in 2022, 23% of them didn't make it to the end of year one. That's a really staggering number. It's the highest we've seen in quite some time. And it suggests that this last in, first out model was unfortunately pretty common last year. Okay, question number three. How is salary trending across private startups? Well, you can see from this chart that we're looking at here, and again, for those of you that don't have access to it, We're looking at a dot chart here that shows the average change basically every quarter or so in salaries across private tech. And to be honest, there hasn't been that much change. If you look at the salary average in, say, November 2022 to the salary average in January of 2024, you'll note that it's up maybe a quarter or a half of a percent, but there hasn't been a meaningful shift in startup salaries across that period. And there's a couple reasons behind this. So first and foremost, a lot of employees expect that as inflation gets higher, startup salaries would obviously keep pace with that inflation. And unfortunately, they really haven't. It turns out that inflation and labor dynamics are two completely separate functions, and they're going to impact your salary in different ways. The second point is that although salaries haven't kept pace with inflation, they haven't gone down much either. Salaries tend to be pretty sticky. Employees that were hired in January of 2024 are getting paid pretty much exactly what employees were getting paid in November of 2022. There just hasn't been that much change in these benchmarks. Question number four, what is happening to equity compensation? All right, so here's where the really big changes have occurred. If you look across salaries we just went through, it's essentially flat from November 2022 to January 2024. But as we throw this new chart up on the screen, and again, for those of you listening along, this is a line chart that shows the percent difference in the average equity or the average salary for startup employees from November of 2022. So that's the starting point. If you look at the equity compensation line in this chart, 
it has declined nearly 37% from November 2022 to January 2024. And again, some people might look at this and say, well, that kind of makes sense, right? The companies involved are probably lower valued than they used to be. They've taken on down rounds. All of that is true. But this chart doesn't reflect that at all. It literally means each employee that's hired in 2024 is receiving about 37% fewer shares than the employees that were hired in November of 2022. It is the biggest change across startup compensation that we've seen in a long time. And it's part of the way that companies are sort of combating the macroeconomic forces that are pushing down valuations and making fundraising and startups really difficult right now. And the last question, what is the state of remote work at U.S. startups? So we can talk about this question in a couple different ways, but the chart we're going to show here is the chart that everyone tends to care about when it comes to remote work. First and foremost, the idea that startups started paying everyone equally, no matter where you lived, was actually never really that true. This wasn't the case in 2021, it wasn't the case in 2022, and it definitely wasn't the case in 2023. More than 85% of startups geolocate their salaries, meaning they pay you differently if you live in Boise, Idaho versus San Francisco. That makes some sense. What we can also see, though, is that startups were hiring a little bit less out of state versus their company HQ than they used to be in the prior couple years. It wasn't a major shift. We didn't see a full return to office, for instance, for all startups across the board, but there was this bounce back, this slight nudge upwards in the percentage of employees that were hired in the same state as their company HQ. Remote work is definitely here to stay across many startups, but perhaps it isn't going to be the only way to work, which we kind of assumed it might have been in 2021. And that's it. Five charts answering five questions stemming from our state of startup compensation report. If you haven't read the full report, I highly suggest you do so. It's got a ton of great data in it. And if you want us to answer a question of yours in a future episode, shoot us an email at dataminute at carta.com. We hope to hear from you soon, and we'll catch you next time on the next episode of the Data Minute.